we had a little bit of a complication in our mealworm colony. You see I've got diatomaceous earth all the way around the outside now. We had a new pest situation that we've never had before. Ants. So we removed all of the bananas and apples from inside just till we know that they're all gone. Most of them have already exited the container and there's little ant bodies here and there that are walking across the DE and getting dehydrated from that. So diatomaceous earth works naturally and as long as I don't put any of it in there, my mealworms will not be affected by that. Mealworms are fun to grow and they're definitely a learning experience as you go along the way. Some people find that keeping them in separate colonies works better because they end up eating each other. And other people don't have as much of a problem with that. I think the reason why I haven't seen that issue as much is because I do give them the apples and carrots and potatoes and such. And I do kind of spoil them a little bit. <laughs> Just as an FYI for those of you that are attempting the mealworm colony. Those bucks are so cute and so sweet. It's only one problem. I have with them right now. They're not coming into rut. They should be acting like bucky bucks right now and they're not. They're not doing any of the bucky behavior at all and it's breeding time. So it looks like we're gonna have late kidding. We have already put a doe in heat with them to try to encourage them. Very little interest was shown. At first there was a little bit of interest but then it was just like ah hey Hey sounds better than girls, which is very unusual for bucks, which is funny because Bo was in rut all summer. Seasonally, Nubians are supposed to be acting like that in the fall. They are seasonal breeders, supposedly. But every goat is different and every herd is different. So we're just gonna go with the flow. See what this brings us this year. The girls are all in the seasonal mode. Almost every single one of them has come into heat in the last week or two. So hopefully by the time they all come back into heat again, the boys will be ready. Tom, you still begging for a girlfriend? Huh? We're hoping to get some hatching eggs for Tom this year. If not, it'll be in the spring. But we want to hatch some eggs out for him to have some buddies so he won't feel like he's just singled out out here with the ducks and bucks. I really enjoyed how the ducks have worked out keeping them with the bucks. They're great for parasite control. They help keep the ground clean. They clean up after the bucks when they drop grain. So as a lot of you know, I've been struggling with my health a little bit here lately. Hasn't been doing as good as it was. Um, I think part of it was, I think it was a combination of things. I initially um, blamed it all on a processed food item that I ate that had no none of the forbidden ingredients, but yet it was full of other ingredients that probably weren't good for my body. Um, the thing with Hashimoto's is any type of chemicals at all aren't good for the thyroid. So it, it all kind of acts together and can affect your health dramatically. So I had a lack of sleep. I had a wild night out with my man for the concert. Um, which is very out of the norm for my body. I'm not used to all the sound and activity and everything like that. So that was a big change. And there was the barometric pressure change, which many of you pointed out in the comments of my last video about the hurricane coming through and changing the way that the barometric pressure was affecting people. And I didn't even think about that. And then I've also been dealing with some personal issues. Um, we sadly have um, some family health issues that are happening that are um, not really doing so great and we are just praying and trying to keep our positive attitudes about things and sending love and prayers to our family members that are suffering the most. So all of these things combined all of these things combined have kind of made me mentally not feel so great too. Um, 
I don't know, I feel like I've started to question myself and try to dig deeper inside of myself to find answers that are more fulfilling and satisfying. And one of those things that I've been questioning is my YouTube channel and its success or lack of success or depending on how you want to look at it. Um, I know a lot of you think that we've come a long way and we have and there are many things that I'm grateful for but when I look at the statistics of YouTube and the algorithms I see some glaring obvious issues with my channel that bother me from a business standpoint. One of the big ones is the lack of views to our videos. Our video views are much lower than channels of the same size as ours. Usually you expect a thousand or more views in the first 24 hours for a channel our size. Unfortunately, we've been getting around 500. Sometimes they go up to 900 within a couple of days, but it's been a lot lower lately and I'm not sure why. Because every time I pick up the camera and make a video, and every time I sit down at the computer and edit it, I try to do my best. And if my best isn't good enough for YouTube, then I'm not sure what that means. I feel like something is missing. And I don't know if it's what I'm doing, or how I'm doing it, or if it's just pure luck, or lack thereof seems like a lot of people get lucky on YouTube and a lot of people don't and I feel like you know sometimes you get a viral video that just takes off and sometimes you don't and it kind of reminds me of planting seeds in the garden you see this radish right here this radish is nice and big it's grown to a pretty good size looking pretty good isn't it this radish was planted at the very same time as this radish you see the difference in size dramatic yet they've been given the same amount of attention the same amount of care the same amount of love but they have not proven to be equal even though they came from the same seed packet, even though they're the same genotype, they are growing differently. And I think that that analogy between how these seeds are growing and how some of my videos grow and some of them don't, how some channels grow and some don't, has been kind of helpful for me to reflect on this situation. And by all means, it's not a real serious situation. We're doing, we're doing well. We're not doing horrible. I'm not complaining. I'm very happy with where we are. But I always want to do better. That's something that's always driven me in my life and made me strive to do things and reach out and do things that I've never done before, like starting a YouTube channel. I never thought I would do that. But when I was inspired to do it, I did it and I'm so glad that I have. I've made so many great connections and so many wonderful friends because of YouTube. So I just really want to spread the word. I want to share with people. I want to teach people. I want to inspire people. And I feel like there's so many people I haven't reached yet. I feel like the ones that I have reached, you guys, the ones watching this now, the ones that comment every, every day on a new video, I feel like you guys get it and you guys appreciate it. And that's why you keep coming back. But what I feel like is missing is that there's more people that I need to reach. There's more people that need to hear that you can homestead, whether you have little kids or whether you have health issues, whatever you feel your obstacles might be, there is always hope that you can reach out and learn how to homestead and get the job done if it's truly what you desire. And that is something I want to share with the entire universe. So for me, growing my YouTube channel is not just about making money. And 
the money would be nice if I got to the point where I was making even just a thousand dollars a month would be amazing to help cover food costs for my animals and help pay for some of the things that I purchased to try to make my videos better but at this point I just want to help people I want to inspire people and I want to be respected by the YouTube community at large and by my family and friends I want them to say she's making a difference she's doing something that she believes in and she's helping people and that's something that I hope to do with my channel so I hope that these seeds that I plant will eventually reach fruition and more people will learn and gain from this message it looks like the deer are back eating my peanuts I'm starting to wonder if it's not deer because deer will usually wipe out all of them. I'm wondering if it might be a beaver coming in from the pond. And that's very, very possible. The pond is right there. I spy with my little eye two little cucumber blooms. Actually, quite more than two. Look at that. We've got male and female flowers opening. We are going to have cucumbers, y'all. It is just a matter of time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, there's baby squash. You guys, it is September, we did it. We planted our squash as late as you possibly could and we are getting a harvest. Hallelujah and praise God. I am so grateful that I decided to do this and I didn't give up. And that's just it. I'm not giving up. I'm crushing it. And there are no small creators. All right, I'm gonna take a few minutes here to harvest some of these wonderful baby greens for the next video that I'll be creating that's coming out tomorrow morning. It's a collaboration with Frugal Family Food. I hope you check it out. Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.